Hi, and welcome to Tech Forever. On today's show, I'll be talking to you about Adobe Security Breach. Also, Nokia actually harnessed the energy of a lightning bolt. I'll be giving you an update on GTA Online and talking about Xbox One's new name. And I'll be talking to you about the Samsung Note 10.1 2014. Plus, we've got a review coming up for you Samsung Galaxy S4 versus the iPhone 5S. Alright, let's go on with the show then. Adobe has actually confirmed that 2.9 million customers have had private information stolen during what they are calling a sophisticated cyber attack on its website. The attackers accessed encrypted customer passwords and payment card numbers, the company have said, but it doesn't believe decrypted debit or credit card data was removed. Adobe have also revealed that it's investigating the illegal access of source code for numerous products, including Adobe Acrobat and Cold Fusion. The company's chief security officer said that Adobe deeply regrets that this incident has occurred. He also added, based on findings to date, that they are not aware of any specific increased risk to customers as a result of this incident. It seems Rockstar is still battling the ongoing problems in their online section of GTA 5. The company did state before the game was released that they could see many problems arising with the amount of interest that there was around the game. Now though, they have begun making ground with their new title update. It all started with error messages saying it couldn't connect to the cloud servers, freezing at certain intervals and on being unable to connect to host players and such. A full list of issues can be found on the Rockstar support website, along with updates on what's being done about them. The patch will be able to deal with most common problems, and Rockstar says they are working around the clock to get everything fixed. The 2014 edition of the Samsung Galaxy Note 10.1 2014 is definitely a featured-filled tablet, but only you powerheads will probably have the potential to unleash its true potential. This year's version is more expensive, but is it worth the price? In terms of the hardware, there is no doubt that the Samsung has ironed out all the mistakes from its first note. It's thinner and lighter, and it offers a gorgeous display and a top-notch sound, and it definitely packs in a better, cleaner design. But what more is that the S Pen features are actually useful. It comes in four editions, black and white, in 16 gig and 32 gig. The Note has a pixel resolution screen, which is definitely higher than the iPads. Let's not forget behind that screen, we have its high powered Exynos 1.9 quad core processor. Plus we have a second 1.3 quad core processor as well. Also a three gigabyte of RAM and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Its built-in stylus and infrared emitter and split-screen multitasking made it a productive powerhouse that other tablets just couldn't match. It is better in every conceivable way and it's one of the few Android tablets that can actually make your life easier. Bottom line is that this note picks up exactly where it left off from last year's model by definitely making vital upgrades to its display and internal device, which improving its core stylus and multitasking features. So it looks like the gaming community has won over Microsoft in regards to the nickname given to the Xbox One, the Xbone. Major Nelson said the name was disrespectful, saying that it disrespects the teams that have put thousands of hours into the product and going on to say, sure, it might be cheeky, but I don't really care for it myself. On the other hand, studio head Phil Spencer said that even though they wouldn't be using the name for like advertising and stuff, he's accepted that it isn't really going anywhere. He says the thing that bugs him the most, in fact, is that he didn't think for himself. Even though they don't have any intention of using the nickname, they did buy the xbone.com domain last month, so the option is still there. It sounds like something from a science fiction movie, and some 200 years after Mary Shelley used lightning to breathe back life into Frankenstein's monster, scientists have copied her idea to power a phone. Nokia have teamed up with the University of Southampton to carry out the proof of concept experiment. The mobile firm have warned users not to try this at home. You have been warned, folks. Now, you might be asking why you would want to power a phone using lightning. 
Well, harnessing nature in this way could provide power sources where electricity is in short supply. Using a transformer, the team recreated a lightning bolt in the lab by passing 200,000 volts across a 30 centimeter air gap. Electrifying stuff, eh? Today we're going to compare two of the most premium phones on the market. The Samsung Galaxy S4 is considered to be the fastest Android phone on the market, but can it take on the Apple's latest flagship device, the iPhone 5S? Now let's take a look at the spec. Both have large screen displays, however the iPhone has a 4 inch retina display which is just slightly smaller to the Samsung's 5 inch screen. It also weighs more at 130 grams, while the iPhone is a lot less at 112 grams. The Apple device comes in three futuristic shades, space grey, silver and of course gold, while the S4 comes in classic black or white. Now onto the memory, and the 5S has capacities of 16, 32 and 64 GB of internal memory, while the S4 had just 16 GB. But unlike the iPhone, you can get external memory support of up to 64 GB. Performance is of course one of the key selling points of any device. The Samsung Galaxy S4 features an Exynos octa-core processor with 2 GB of RAM, whereas the iPhone 5S has a dual-core 64-bit processor with 1 GB of RAM. So we tested out the performance of both phones using the Geekbench 3 software. Surprisingly, the 5S actually performs way better than the Samsung despite the S4's octa-core processor. As you can see, the single core performance of the 5S is almost double that of the S4. The SunSpider JavaScript for browser speed test showed that the 5S finishes the test in 454 milliseconds, whereas the S4 takes 1210.5 milliseconds. The 5S is almost three times as faster than the S4. Let's talk about the battery life. For a smartphone, we think the battery life is extremely important. We did a looping video test to examine the battery performance. What's interesting is the iPhone 5S clocked in over 11 hours, while the S4 lasted for only 7 hours, with the same settings. Now let's take a look at the cameras. Samsung has a 13 megapixel camera, while the iPhone has an 8 megapixel. Both of them feature 2.2 aperture, however the S4 comes with a LED flash light compared with a 5S's true tone flash. Image quality is almost identical, but with the iPhone, images appear more natural, whereas with the Samsung, they appear slightly artificially enhanced. Depending on your own preference, both cameras are as good as each other. On to the voice recognition, and we all know about what Siri can do and its capabilities, but Samsung's S4 just doesn't cut it and is not as good as its competitor. Both of them are running the latest operating systems, which we will go into detail in another review. Now the verdicts are in. Both of these phones are at the top end of the market, and they have their own pros and cons. With the introduction of the fingerprint scanner, Apple claims to be more secure, and performance-wise Apple is faster. Samsung beats Apple with its display. The 5 inch screen is an advantage for people who like to watch videos and for web browsing it's just nicer to have that bigger screen. So now it's up to you to decide which phone is best for you. For more information you can catch us on our website www.techforever.co.uk and our Facebook and Twitter at Tech Forever News. Hope you enjoyed the show. See you next week. Bye. Bye.